Here we are, podcast number two, Anastasia, not over. Coming up soon. My favourite track is on. Love this track. This is the track I use to kind of prime myself to get in the mood to do something really, really fun. What's going on, Jimmy? It's your boy. <laughs> we are ready to go. Here we go. Okay, music is off. Anastasia is in the house. So Anna just requests to join and we can get this kicked right off. I feel like I'm really close. Hello, my friend. This is going to be exciting. Uh, oh, here yeah. and ooh. Hopefully, Skating Panda comes because I forgot his question that he wanted to ask. So, uh, are we ready? Of the inline figure skating podcast with me. Here we go. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Yeah, very, very good. So uh, we did have a little conversation before, so uh, we already know what's going on, don't we, Anna? We know, we both feel comfortable. So uh, how should we talk about this? How should we start this off? Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, your, some of your skating history and maybe what you've been up to lately, just so people understand a little bit about you? Okay, from my skating history, it's okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so I came to the ice rink when I was four years old. Uh, in, in Russia, wow. you can come to the ice uh, when you are three years old. Uh, because at six, uh, you should have a test. And uh, you should be ready to, do, to go to the sport group professional. Okay. And, that's interesting. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, I changed my ice skates to the roller skates uh, when I was uh, 18. It was five 18. years. Yes, 18. When you were and, uh, 18, so you... Yes, and wow. it was... And so you, you skated on the ago. ice for, for, for 14 years? You skated uh, on yes. the ice? Wow. Yes. Wow. And uh, what, what was the highest level that you, that you got to? What jumps were you, were you working on? Uh, when you last were on the ice? I think it was triple jumps, uh, triple flip. My favorite, triple lats, so-so. <laughs> wow. Did you ever try triple axel? Not. Not. No. Never. Oh, scary. Scary. Like, now you see the girls, they're doing, like, all these quads. It's crazy. Yes, it's absolutely ice, no? crazy. And uh, I can understand why they can do it. <laughs> and yeah. It's... It seems like everybody's been using the spinners off the ice, you know, in, in the lockdown, everybody using these spinners and now they're all spinning so, uh, so well in the ice. I think yes, but not really this thing. I think it's about a uh, mix of system in Russian sport and it's uh, about uh, experience of coaches, uh, it's uh, a lot of work on ice or in on the floor and it's choreography, it's complex of things and uh, yeah. it's a lot of work, just, just it. It's, uh... And uh, so when, when you're skating in Russia, uh, how many coaches would you have? Would you have just one coach that does everything or you have different coaches that do different things? Choreography, uh, jumping, not, spinning? Uh, I wasn't so happy, <laughs> like a Russian national team. <laughs> Uh, I have only one coach and uh, I skated uh, with her, I think, uh, maybe 10 years, so 10 years. From, uh, from nine years old, I think, to the, to the end, to the, when I was uh, 20, I removed to the, another coach, to Elizabeth, I think. Okay. Okay, and now people are having many coaches for different things? I think, uh, yes, in national team, of course. Uh, they have a lot of specialists. Uh, uh, they invite uh, some people. And, uh, you know, um, in pair skating in Russia, uh, they are practicing uh, with... Um, 
uh, with acrobats sometimes. And uh, okay. yeah. they have uh, choreography classes, uh, um, physical trainings, uh, they have a lot, yeah. and they have uh, um, some work with uh, actors. Oh, really? Yes, because uh, you should uh, be very, you should be artist, nice. Yeah, I mean, you see, you see this in the skaters nowadays, you know, don't they? There's, there's amazing at everything. Yes. You know? So, anyway, so we we talked enough about ice skating, and we're not we're we're talking about inline figure skating. So, why don't we segue a little bit? And I would like to ask you the transition from ice to inline figure skating, how it was for you, what was easy, what was hard, and what did you learn? Um, it was very hard, and at first uh, I I don't want it. I don't want to change uh, I, uh, from ice skates to, to the roller skates. I think my coach asked me about it for maybe two years and uh, um, but I told her that it's painful for me to me for me to skate on roller skates <laughs> and yeah. um, I love ice so much uh, this time and I can't believe how I can change it how I can uh, leave ice and go to the floor and um, I think it was in my mind and uh, it uh, stopped me, it stopped me a little, I think, and, uh, uh, but, but uh, when I understood that I uh, lost all my triples one day uh, and uh, I can't uh, be champion on ice, and uh, my coach uh, said to me, uh, uh, do you want uh, to participate uh, in World Championship? And I said yes. And then I removed. And you went order. straight to inline figure skating, not to quads, to inline. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So, uh, so then when you started to train, how was the, was the training different? on inline and where did you train were you training in a, a, a like a sports hall or where where were you training it was a basketball sport complex in yeah. my city and yeah. um, uh, it was hard decision it was hard in physical things you know uh, roller is harder than uh, ice skating and uh, I have pain in my back and uh, <laughs> with uh, very high pick skates <laughs> because uh, I started on pick skates and then yeah. moved to Snow White. Yeah. Uh, yeah, me too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, it was uh, maybe half of the year of adaptation to yeah and uh, to so let's talk about let's talk about pig skates and snow white uh how did you find the pig skates and why did you change to snow white i found pig skates uh, by a very easy way uh one of the um, girl in our group uh, one girl she bought snow white and uh, uh, my coach said, uh, try her skate, because we have same size. Uh, so I tried, and uh, I choose big skates about it. I, I don't know that I can use Snow White, and uh, it will be better for some things. And uh, I think the first world championship I won on big skates. Yeah. And uh, next, uh, I came to Elizabeth Martin Mora in Barcelona, and she said that I need uh, to use Snow White, and uh, they can be sponsors for me. 
Okay. And uh, so there's, there's, there's something that I have noticed recently. So lately, uh, this is just this is just my personal experience. So I'm very lucky that I've well I've skated on roll line linear, uh, golden horse avant, pig skate with four wheel, and also I have I skated on Snow White as well. And I have a new frame here which is the same as Snow White. So and when I first got this golden horse, I don't know if you you know the brand, yeah? Yes, I know, I know. So when I first got them, I hated them. I thought it was so uncomfortable because there is a big hole here. Oh, you know. So I hated it, and then the other because I'm I'm skating on different frames. I'm like, okay, I use a different one. The other day, I changed the middle wheel, and I put it one back, and now we have the same space between. And now I feel like I'm cheating because everything is so easy. Today I record a lesson where I did all double three turns forward, backwards, everything. And even backwards, it's easier because when you're going backwards, you, have, you you lift onto the back wheel to turn, right? Well, because it's the same distance, it's so easy. But when you have this, when you have like this, it's so far away and it's scary. So I don't know if you, I, I would love to hear your opinion and your experience on the different, where the wheels are, the different wheels you've used and um, something like that, and what you've seen from other people. I really don't know, because I used the only these <laughs> things. I yeah. uh, like, if I feel that it's okay for me, I yeah. uh, will be afraid to change something, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh... So, can you hold yours up? Because I think even your, your hole at the back yes. is probably even small. It's smaller than mine, it's, or maybe the same, because like what I've noticed when the two when the two wheels are far apart, like when you do the when you do go onto the front wheel, it's so easy because they're so close. So you only yes. have to lift a little bit. But when the wheels, I've seen some guys with really big feet, and they have the they have like the wheels are like this far apart. So you have so much space, and I'm like this must be really really tough to skate, you know. So I think for most girls, when your feet are small, it's it's quite easy really. It's easier Maybe. because everything. The, the wheels are the same size. When you have a big feet or a small feet, the wheel is the same size. Uh, maybe, but Almost. I know, uh, for example, Antonio Panfili, uh, he puts he puts uh, the big wheel in, to the center and skates and he's skating like this. And I can't understand how because uh, you know we have. Uh, um, Firm in Russia, uh, it's pro skating, I think. It's named pro yeah. skating. And uh, my little athlete, uh, she's, uh, she's trying to skate uh, on this because it's uh, not so expensive. And uh, uh, for them, it's the exit because only about yeah. price. And yeah. um, um, I can see that. Uh, she isn't comfortable with this because it's so much like this. A big, yeah, a big, big rock yes, thing, yeah? yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she's uh, very. <laughs> it's, it's it's fun sometimes because she yeah. can't uh, control it. Uh, she she isn't can't feel it. Her, yes, just... consistency uh, yeah. and. Uh, it's a problem sometimes, and uh, I really think that she needs snow whites, maybe. Maybe pick skates for start, because uh, she's beginner. Yeah, because I think the, 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 the size of the rocker for some people makes such a big difference. Yes. You know, it's, I, so I, I change between, I sometimes I, I'm trying to wear four wheels on here and then snow white here, like pick skates and on the same, because I have both Jackson Boo. And I try it, and it feels. I really see the difference. You, you feel the difference of the speed as well when you push. It's, you know, when people ask me, "Oh, what what frame should I get?" This is this is this is a question I'm trying to learn to have the answer for everybody, no matter what size feet you have. And you know, it's it's a hard it's a hard question to answer, isn't it? You know, because everybody's different. Yes. Everybody. Yes. It's it's hard and. Uh, now with so many companies making making so many frames, it's 
everybody starts to get really confused. You know? And it's really cool well, because uh, it's a chance uh, to show our sport that uh, we can show yeah. it. Yeah, you know, uh, no, it's, it's interesting. Okay, so let's talk uh, about the, the pick, uh, the, the stopper. The stopper. Which, which, which is your, what stopper do you use? Uh, Snow White. <laughs> Really? Oh, you use the Snow White yes, one? Yes, because uh, I tried uh, the roll line stopper uh, when I was in Barcelona. Elizabeth gave it to me and uh, I, it was hard for me. Uh, he was so big and uh, so high and I had a very high flip and lats, but uh, I can't do steps and spins. Uh, like before because yeah. uh, it was hard for me and I think uh, it uh, it needs time uh, to remove some things but we haven't time we have I think uh, almost a month before World Roller Games and it was dangerous to change something if uh, yeah. it wasn't comfortable for me yeah like something I'm I'm finding so between all the different stoppers that I'm using, uh, some of them, it's, I find it almost impossible to spin. Like I tried to do a back spin and it's so sticky, yes. I just stopped. Yes. You know, because the easiest to spin was the pick skate, the new P14, this one, because it's so hard that it's, it slips really, really well, but then on the jumps, you can slip from yes. the jump easy. Especially on triple you know? jumps, on the speed, it slides, I know. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's finding the the perfect balance. I've heard from uh, from Marta that I talked to the other day. Her favorite is the cappuccino roll line, the 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 cappuccino one. This I think it's like cream color. That's her favorite. So I didn't try. So I'm I want to try everything. You know, so it's I'm trying to test everything. I'm trying to find out from amazing skaters like yourself what is the best. And you use Snow White one, so that's interesting because it always looked like it was a little bit harder. Because Natalia, my partner here, she, she has the Snow White. And she complains so much sometimes, oh, I can't spin, oh, it's this stopper. And now I'm like, no, no, it, it, the stopper is okay. <laughs> uh, yes, I think uh, no, big stoppers like Roline, it's for Roline blades. Because it's, uh, they fix it another way. It's like this. A different angle. And... Uh, in Snow White, it's like this, and when you start... How, how is the angle from this one? Uh, no, I, yeah, I'll, I'm talking I'll, I'll, about I'll, I'll, the line. Can... <laughs> okay. yeah, I, just, I just wonder how, the, how, how this is, you know? Like, uh, th this is not Snow White, it's, but it's, it's, it's based on Snow White. It's, like a, it's a new frame that you, it's not out yet, but is it the same as, similar to yours, like the angle? Uh, so, okay, in roll line, they put stopper like this, in this ah, position, okay. yes. And in Snow yeah. White, it's like this. And roll line, right. big stopper, yeah, is it's for roll line. It's not for Snow White, I think, because in, on spins, it's uncomfortable to, yeah. oh, to spin. I need, I need to try... I need to get this Snow White, this Snow White uh, stopper and try. I would love to have all the stoppers and I can fit with yes. all the frames because some of the, some of them go what some of them are US and some of them are you know they're different, aren't they? Why they can't be the same? Why they can't all be the same? And you know the bearings are all different. It's yes, like, uh, this on, is, this on is ice so skates, uh, it's easier, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> It's like if I want to change the wheel from my pick to my golden horse or to my the Snow White, the wheels I can't check. I, I have to take the bearings out. I'm like, this is so stupid. Why is not all the same? Okay, so now I want to ask you about wheels. Which are which are your favorite? If you can only use one one wheel for the rest of your not, life, which uh, wheel I you used. Um, I think it was. Uh... I used pick skates and uh, Garmany wheels, I think it's named something like this, uh, green and uh, blue wheels. And uh, I think, uh, I don't know, it's another blade and uh, I never used another wheels on Snow White, only this one. It's the champ, champ. is yes, it the champ? champ wheels. And uh, uh, wait, for me it was okay, but I 
know from uh, other athletes who use uh, Speedmax in Russia that uh, jumps better for for the floor, uh, for the wood floor. Yeah. And the Speedmax, yeah. it's uh, better for uh, stone, I think. And so... Yeah, yeah. I, I never use the Speedmax. I, I, ha- I love the Synergy. I, they're, re- they're really good for me. They last forever. I think and I can Synergy is uh, very similar to the Champs, not? Yeah. No, it's it's similar to Speedmax. They're both 89A. Mm. I think this is 84A. Uh, but I never tried the Speedmax, but I need. I think I need to try this. You know, I, I, I want to try everything. Yes. <laughs> I want to find what, what is working really nice. Uh, because uh, did you ever notice that people talk about, let, let's say one guy is 90 kilo and one girl is 40 kilo. So the, the, the wheel, one, one, one could be softer. And if I use the same soft wheel, then it's going to be, I'm, I have more weight. So it's going to be even, push it down even more, you know. I think this can yes. make a difference, but nobody really talk about it. But I hear that in uh, roller hockey, they talk, they use this, they use the weight of the player to determine how hard the wheel is. So maybe this can be something interesting for inline figure skating. Yes, yes, I think. Because... Yeah, no, Co- Kobe, I never used the Harmony. I used Geneva forever. And then I went on to Synergy with my pick. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So we talked about wheels, frames, and let's talk about how it was uh, for you when you were training, uh, jumping, uh, falling. Did you use protection, or did you learn how to fall? Like, because we learn how to fall on the ice. We fall and we almost sliding. We stand back up and carry on, and everything is okay. But it's not the same on wheels, is it? We fall and we stop. I think uh, on roller skates, uh, it's uh, the thing about time. You can't uh, stop fall. <laughs> uh, but yeah. uh, at first, uh, it was painful, more painful than on ice. But uh, then it was okay. And now it's painful on ice for me. <laughs> To be honest, uh, yes. Did you did you did you wear anything any protection? Uh, at first, yes. Uh, when I started to uh, learn uh, triple jumps or double axel, uh, uh, I think uh, maybe four years ago, I I wear some some things uh, and uh, uh, it was uh, volleyball things, very soft. Not uh, yes, volleyball. yes, it. Uh, good because uh, for roller skating uh, on the streets uh, they have plastic it has plastic and it's not comfortable it's painful too but if you have uh, volleyball uh, things it's okay okay interesting so everyone listening up volleyball protection is what you need to get yes and okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, and uh, what, what what else did I want to ask you? Uh, what else did I want to ask you? So now now that you're coaching, because you're you're coaching now, yes? Uh, yes, uh, I am coaching a little. Uh, now I have on the beginners on roller skates. Uh, uh, it's about problems uh, with place where we can skate. Uh, yeah. But uh, one year and a half. Uh, before uh, I was a coach uh, on ice uh, in uh, Tver district is uh, in a very small uh, Russian provincial town and uh, I have groups uh, and uh, a lot of skaters uh, and it was great experience but I understood that I I don't want to to coach on ice, to be coach on ice, yeah. and uh, I don't uh, want to live in this small town. I yeah. uh, I want to live in Moscow and <laughs> coach on roller skates. Yeah. <laughs> and now I have mm. beginners, but uh, I'm talking a lot uh, with federation and with uh, officials. Uh, 
to move our sport forward. Uh, it's uh, in Russia. It's the way because uh, all uh, things in sport, Olympic sports, uh, seriously things, uh, professionals, uh, it's government. It's absolutely government, and uh, you should understand that you can't uh, have uh, business by yourself. Uh, you should talk with officials uh, in uh, of your city and. They will give you some place, and now I'm talking about it. So yeah, okay. So let's let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, what we took, what we spoke about before in our our pre-call uh, about the federate the the Russian Federation versus the, the European Federation with the different rules and, and stuff like this. What is different? And uh, I think uh, now in Russian Federation uh, on the last. Uh, Russian Championship, uh, they used uh, uh, International Skating Union rules because okay. now they haven't uh, judges, but uh, they are working about it uh, on it a lot. And uh, uh, now we have uh, some judges from World Skate. Uh, I know they learned some things and uh, they did exam. And I think uh, okay. it spends time, but uh, we keep going. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's... yes, it's problem. It's problem, but yeah. we must uh, just do it. Yeah, because this, I mean, at the moment, it's still such a new, new sport. You know, now it, I think this, year, this last year, uh, because all the ice rinks closed and many skaters decided to get some inline figure skates all around the world. Now it becomes a little bit more enticing for skaters because they're like, oh, there's an, something else we yes. can do. Uh, you know, so it's, it's a very exciting time. Like for myself now, because now I am going in this direction instead of doing my shows and stuff because we don't even know what's happening with shows anymore. And it's a good time for me to go this way in England, as we talked about before. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's with a lot of people with the same mind and the same goal to push the sport forward from different countries and all around the world. I think it can only be only be better for, for coaches and, and for the skaters as well, you know. Yes, and I think uh, the way to uh, move it forward, to populate it, uh, the sport, it's, uh, it's show. Because I'm working in theaters. Uh, in February, uh, we have premiere in uh, Russian uh, Academic Year of Theater. And uh, yeah. uh, it's great uh, that uh, producers attend uh, on the line figure skating. Because uh, I learned uh, actors how to skate. And it's yeah. very popular uh, theater in Moscow, and uh, it's a great thing uh, to include uh, our yes. sport in culture life uh, of people uh, and uh, uh, do a shows uh, to to show them that uh, we're here, we are in this world with them. No, it's amazing. I think I saw a picture or video a few years ago of a, a show in Russia on inline figure skates outside. And I'd never seen a show on inline figure skates. Even now I haven't really seen one, but it would be, it would be cool if there starts to be more shows, like there is ice shows, there starts to be more shows for inline figure skaters because it's much cheaper because you don't need ice. Uh, <laughs> you just need yes, a stage. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> it's fun, but uh, to find uh, basketball sport palace uh, in Russia, it's harder uh, to find uh, ice palace in Russia. <laughs> it's a very funny thing oh. because, <laughs> uh, no, you can find it, but uh, people will uh, tell you that uh, you will broke our floor and something like this, and they don't want to uh, take some new, some new things uh, in their life, and so. I think. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, 
I don't know if you know about this. So about two and a half weeks ago, uh, one girl reached out to many, many uh, Instagram coaches and influencers. Uh, they didn't reach out to me, but he reached out to Ice Skate Coach uh, to ask for help because they want to find somewhere to skate in their small village. They have a place, but they think they will ruin the floor. And how can we help? So I put together a huge survey and I think almost 50 people uh, commented. I asked people where they've skated, how, what, what, what skates they used and did they ruin the floor? So I have all this information. I can actually send it to you. Oh, okay. and I don't know how to, I don't know how to put the information together. I just have where they skated, the skates, how they did the floor, but it's in an Excel because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. So I have the information. So you can read it and you can have a look. So I think this uh, can be interesting for anyone. So if anyone wants that, just send me a message. Uh, I will post in my stories later about that, actually. And uh, yeah, because I'm in my four years of training uh, for different shows. And even when I went to Cirque du Soleil, like the first the floor they give me was too soft. I couldn't skate. And then we find the right floor that works. But through training and a lot of uh, corporate shows I did, I've tried so many different floors. So I know which floors are good and I know which floors we will leave some marks. But most of the time you can wash the marks and they go away because it's just from the wheels, you know, or the stopper. That isn't, unless, you, unless it's like a varnish, like ballet floor, where it's been varnished. Yeah, this will ruin it straight, straight away. You'll make some nice marks on there, you know. But... Uh, you know, it's, this is this is a, this is what's tough. When the place says no, we don't want it, you will ruin the floor, and they don't know. So why would they be different? They think they're going to ruin it. You know. Yes. Uh, we are the same in Lanzarote. They all say no. So you, so Kobe, what you can do, uh, whatever floor they have there, if you have a look through my my. Uh, the document message me i'll send it to you but it is in the in the figure skating groups on facebook and then you can find the floor and you can tell them uh, or you can tell them to call me okay <laughs> thank you <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> uh, okay so what else what else do we want to talk about let's talk about uh, com competitions and competing okay so do you have a let's start this off funny do you have a funny story from competing did you ever forget your routine forget something did something funny happen or something like that? Oh, I had, but I really can't remember something just now. <laughs> and yeah. uh, oh. I think it was funny in Barcelona. Uh, now it's funny, but at this moment uh, we was very afraid uh, with my future husband because I came to Barcelona with my boyfriend and we... We came to the Barcelona and uh, we understood that our baggage uh, just disappeared. They didn't. Uh, no. They didn't uh, give it to us, and it's about Aeroflot mistake, uh, Russian yeah. Avia company. Yes, and <laughs> it was funny, but at this day, uh, it uh, was. Uh, we was lucky, yes. <laughs> uh, this day in Sheremetyevo oh. airport in Moscow, it, the system of the baggage uh, was absolutely stopped because it, it, uh, it isn't working and uh, nobody can help us. And uh, our baggage, uh, like our luggage, uh, it, came, it came to Barcelona, I think, uh, after two days only. Oh, but did, did uh, we you have, have your skates we, inside? Yes, I have my skates with me uh, always uh, in yeah, the yeah. hand uh, luggage. Uh, and uh, but I was afraid that uh, Russian uniform uh, didn't uh, didn't come. And uh, but we have two luggage and uh, luggage of my boyfriend. Yes, was. Okay. disappeared and oh. uh, mine was okay <laughs> and uh, oh. yes and uh, uh, virtual games for me it's always uh, good experience uh, i'm very lucky on this competition because in china uh, i hasn't I, I haven't accreditation uh, they lost my accreditation 
and uh, to I haven't a coach with me, parents, uh, nobody, uh, somebody from Federation at first. I came to the China, China alone. I was uh, 17. Uh, in China, they, they don't know English really. And they are talking yeah. uh, worse. Uh, my English is better, I think. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was... Uh, absolutely great adventure uh, uh, because I came and uh, they didn't give me accreditation I can come uh, to the short program uh, they uh, Fernand Fedroni uh, uh, came to me and uh, uh, he's trying to to do with this problem something but he can't because uh, yeah. it's uh, what skates it's very big uh, Federation and it's hard to ask somebody <laughs> to do accreditation for me so quickly. Uh, so it was uh, very fun and after yes and after it yes I came to the to the ring because uh, American judge uh, he gave me accreditation of another woman from America uh, and. Uh, it was like this because Chinese people they can't understand uh, the faces <laughs> if you oh aren't God. Chinese. <laughs> you know what's funny? Like yes, we, and uh, a, lot, a lot of people say that about Chinese people. Oh, they all look the same. Yes, and then they say that about us, and we're like, what? And they probably think, no, we yes. don't. We all and different. about it, I forgot my accent in short program because I was so nervous. I can't. Uh, uh, I can't uh, concentrate on my program. It was like this, and uh, so uh, it's okay. And uh, okay. after it, I <laughs> I lost my flight from China to the most to the Peking, uh, from Nanjing to Peking, yeah. uh, to Beijing. Sorry. And uh, yeah, next uh, on Russian, it's Peking. <laughs> It's uh, oh always God. hard <laughs> to remove. Uh, so yeah. I think uh, I lost uh, my flight and uh, I wait in China one night. Uh, I I came uh, to the, I think it's not really friends, uh, but to, to the athlete. Uh, he lives in China and uh, he skated uh, from Russia, uh, okay. like aggressive roller freestyle. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And uh, I came to him, I'm crying because uh, my mom uh, tried to buy a new ticket on the flight. <laughs> yeah. And oh, uh, it was very fun because they have, in China, you can meet. Uh, Crazy taxist. Uh, they tried to lie. They tried to take a lot of money. If they can see you aren't, uh, you aren't Chinese. You don't yes, know, don't know and you do. I'm talking on English, and they can't understand me. And it's funny yeah. because in Beijing, I uh, said to to the taxi. And uh, we are going uh, to the hotel in Beijing, and uh, he's talking that uh, I just, I must give to him more money than uh, I should. And I, I said, why? Why? And after it, uh, he understood that I am Russian, and he started talk on Russian, and oh after God. it... <laughs> I this can pay when, when uh, what I must pay, but uh, it, it's an amazing country, I think. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, China. It's, it's, it's an interesting place. Yes, very, absolutely, very because uh, you can see uh, the very old uh, building, uh, Imperator's building, uh, Chinese Imperators, and... Uh, very close, you can see a new building. It's absolutely yeah. amazing feeling. Yeah. Oh, I mean, 
the whole of Asia, it's, it's like nothing you've ever been to. The first time you go to Asia, whether it's Thailand, Singapore, uh, China, Hong Kong, you go there and it's like a different world. Yes. It's a little yes. bit scary the first time you go if you're young. It's a little, and it's, and it's a little stinky as well. Hong Kong was like kind of stinky when I went there. <laughs> oh. Okay, so uh, what I don't want to talk, oh, there's something I wanted to talk to you. So when you, going back to, going back to ice skating a little bit, so the technique that you used on ice, when you came to inlines, did you, you uh, use a different technique? Uh, did you try a different technique that worked better, or did you keep the same technique? Uh, I, it's about uh, elements. It's only thing yeah, about elements, because sometimes you can use ice technique, and sometimes you can change it. Uh, it's only the way to, to have a synthesis, to, have, to, to use it together, because uh, it's only the way. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, I think, uh, and uh, I learn it, and uh, I uh, have a project like my diploma work, and we uh, uh, we look that uh, quad skater and ice skater who can uh, both of them uh, they are better in uh, inline figure skating. So, uh, no. Yufan Chen and Natalie Moutley and uh, Colin, uh, they are quad skaters and ice skaters together. And uh, they are a lot of times world champions. And it's uh, absolutely right because uh, they use uh, both te techniques together. I think it's the way to have a great athlete in our sport. What would you say the difference between jumping technique on ice and quad? Because I heard that the quad technique is different, but the quad technique is better for inline than ice. Uh, quads, I think, better in elements. Uh, ice skating, better in skating skills, I think. Because uh, okay. jumping in figure skating, it's another technique. And you can use some things. But now in new rules, uh, roll art rules, uh, you should use quad technique a little because uh, they wrote about it in their rules and you can understand that for quad skaters it's better than for ice skaters. And the only way, uh, the way for ice skaters to uh, do the things, uh, it's uh, just learn something from quad, I think, use them technique. Uh, to do some elements a little and uh, I think something like this yeah and do you th so wh when I talk about the the technique like do you do use a different technique for for example for Salco I think on ice uh, uh, no uh, for Salco we have absolutely ice uh, technique uh, the, it, this technique used, uh, I think, a lot of Russian figure skaters uh, like Evgenia Medvedeva and uh, I think uh, maybe Kamila Valieva. And this is some. Uh, okay. This is uh, to bury the technique, I think. Okay. And, uh, and uh, yes. Yeah. No, no, go. And like for for Axel, for like Axel, for example. Would you be using uh, more of the, For the me, technique? it's the hardest jump in my career because uh, it's, it was hard to do it right. And uh, I learned yeah. it in the United States of America uh, on ice. And I think uh, on uh, roller skates, I tried to remove this technique, uh, but it isn't for roller skating. It's not comfortable. It, it isn't comfortable for me. Uh, so yeah. we just, uh, like a coach, I must find the way to my athletes uh, to do double axel by another way, I think. Yeah, because I know when I uh, I start to to watch the, the roller skaters, I notice that when they go for axel, they, they have the arm here. Yes. And I guess this is to stop them from turning because you have to, on quad, you have to be perfect. You have to take off forward and land backwards, yes. perfect. Now on ice, you can take off sideways and land yes. side. Yes, so you have but you, you can do some slight 
on the roller skates and it's a problem because if uh, you will open uh, you know Alexei Mishin if you will yeah. open uh, Alexei Mishin uh, book uh, you will see that uh, he uh, uh, he told that um, you must do slide and toe together on roller skates you can do only toe and uh, yeah, yeah. it's hard It's hard yeah. uh, for me. Uh, I jumped by a little slide and uh, on the toe, and then yeah. uh, to the yeah, jump. Me too. Yes. Me too. I would slide sideways. So when I try to do axel, I'm like, Phew. I did. I never tried double axel. I would love to, but I'm like, okay, now I'm forty. I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't want to. I know I have to hurt myself to get a double axel in line. So no. But even single, it's it's so different, isn't it? Like especially on the pick skate. On this pig skate for do axel, and can you imagine to try double axel on it? It would be tough. Yes, and on snow white too, I think, and uh, on the low line, yeah. and uh, it's uh, one way to find new technique because uh, you know in figure skating we have some uh, scientific works. Uh, in Russia, we have a lot of uh, specialists who uh, can uh, tell us what we must do, and we have a lot of. Uh, Uh, athletes to try it on them. Yeah, to <laughs> yes, to test yeah. them. And uh, in yeah. line figure skating, we can't. We uh, just have uh, three great athletes in this country, in another country, and uh, it's hard uh, to do tests. Yeah, so this is now we have to all work together and to try to help each other which is helping the sport you know instead of like no i'm going to keep my information well the sport is going to stay small like this we all need to grow together yes it will be great then we'll have yes. bigger competitions more competitions more fun for the kids because when the kids they're skating when there's a competition they're exciting they're making the program they get to skate to music because pe even adults everybody Once they skate to music, it's so much more fun than, you know, when you first start and you practice your three turn, you practice your crossovers. But then when you know enough, imagine it's like ingredients, you know, enough ingredients of skating to be able to skate to music and go right and go left. And it's more fun then, isn't it? You know? Yes. So competitions are good. Uh, so, and I think uh, we're talking about Russian system on figure skating and uh, can I tell something about it uh, because uh, you know uh, why I say it about government system because we have regulament uh, some rules in Russia it's rules about how much you should skate in uh, a week I think it's uh, not really work in some small uh, provincial towns but it works in Moscow with, with the Russian national team. And the this, this system, uh, it helps. In roller skates, uh, we haven't this in Russia. We haven't a uh, document that uh, tell to us, you should skate, uh, uh, national team should skate uh, four hours a day, for example. Yeah. Uh, yes, and uh, about it, coaches can't find... Uh, Uh, money and can't find place because government uh, didn't regulate, uh, didn't uh, told uh, to directors that they must uh, uh, they must move this sport, and it's problem in Russia. Yeah. And uh, yeah. another thing, uh, figure skating in Russia, it's national sport. It's absolutely national because uh, we have. Uh, Uh, crazy parents about it, and <laughs> I think uh, the main thing why Russian uh, uh, so amazing in the sport because uh, Russian crazy mothers uh, they put the ch children uh, uh, to the skates at four, and uh, next time a child uh, lives on the ice, and uh, he. She and he uh, hasn't uh, education, hasn't really school, uh, only maybe teachers that comes to him. And uh, all he knows is ice. And uh, all family lives on ice with him. 
because my mom when i was figure skater she lost uh, her life absolutely uh, she works and after uh, she was psychologist <laughs> manager <laughs> and uh, a lot of thing <laughs> for her daughter and uh, yeah. it's only the way because uh, figure skating in russia it's very strong thing i know that uh, in inline figure skating i don't want to the same to do the same system because like i said it's not for personality it's just for champions and yeah. uh, but i want uh, to have a discipline like on ice in inline figure skating because yeah. uh, it's the first thing that we must do and uh, Okay, uh, children can enjoy, but they must understand why they are here, why they came. Yeah. And uh, yeah. when, um, before government uh, will be interested in the sport, we, we can't do something. We can only uh, show them that we uh, have the sport in Russia, and it's all. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's... It's so hard to start something new in any country, you know, and especially if you have to have the government involved, you know, because like for me now, like I don't know if you saw Xu Shengdu, the skaters in Taiwan. Obviously, you see yes, these, yes, yes, I know, amazing, and I see the pictures where they have the small ones in a circle. I'm like, oh my god, this is the dream. You have your small yes. ones you're teaching, and then you have these, and but first they have they have the place to do it. They have this amazing venue, and so I see this. I've seen this for the past year, and I thought, God, one day when I stop the shows, I want to have something like this. And then, like six weeks, two two months ago, uh, the Roller World in England, they messaged me, and we talk, and then uh, they offer me to be the head coach. So this is this rink. It's amazing. It's the size of an ice rink, but it's a roller rink. So I have an opportunity. I have the rink. And now I need now I need to probably start from the beginning, with the kids coming and teach them from the beginning, and hopefully maybe some kids from London that are already doing ice skating or inline figure skating. But in England, almost ninety percent of the kids they have the off ice skates because this is what happens. If you're in England, you buy off ice skates because everyone has them. If you're in America, everyone buys the pick skates because this is what everybody has, so you buy the same. So. Uh, I mean, I bought them once, but I never used it because it didn't look very strong. For I wanted to do pairs, but I don't know how they are to use. But they, nobody's using these in competitions, are they? Yes, yes. And um, I leave my work uh, on ice uh, for this dream, like your dream, yeah. to have uh, groups, to have. Uh, I, to have roller yeah. rink, uh, to have a system yeah. <clears throat> to practice, and uh, I think is yeah. really... you know it's. Uh, I have a I have a meeting actually in one week. I have a meeting with the the Federation of Artistic Roller Skating in England, and they 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 it's all quad. I I'm hoping that I can work with them and maybe one or two more coaches that I trust. We can work and we can make a system to have something the quad and the yes. inline under one place. And then it's legitimate, and we can really push forward, you know. Yes, so of course. Hopefully that will work, but it depends, you know. I don't know how they are. Hopefully they're nice people and they want to work together, or maybe they like, no, this is our way, and this is how we do, you know, how it is, right? So we we will see, we will see, and so I'm hopeful, and yeah, I mean, hopefully you will come to Roller World one day for a competition. You will bring your kids. Oh, we God. will have a competition, <laughs> maybe in five years, you know. I. You see, if a rink like this, I have to think five, ten, fifteen years down the road, because if the kids come now and they're five, well, we're going to start learning and learning and learning and learning, and I'm going to learn more and more and more, because as you coach, you learn. Oh, that worked, and then you try. Oh, that, but that didn't work with this kid. You know, you need a different technique with different people. You can't just okay, this is one technique. Go. Yes. No, no, I like the three turn. No, no, I like the mohawk. Okay, you know, for a jump, so everybody. You know how it is. Everybody likes to do the jump different, you know. So it's, I think it's lots of good things coming up with all of us. And uh, is there anything else I didn't, we didn't talk about 
We talked a bit about the competitions. Anything more about the competitions? Like, how was it for you when you were going to the competition? Were you nervous? Were you excited? Uh, tell us a little bit about that, if you would like. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I was afraid, uh, really, because I know um, that uh, athletes, uh, professional athletes, absolutely need a psychologist to their work. If coach can't do this, uh, they must uh, find uh, another people to help. And coach must find another people to help. <laughs> so the athletes, if uh, uh, he has some stops uh, in his mind, and I has it. I, I has it and uh, I know it. And uh, it was hard for me every competition. I, I, I like it. I like competition. I like to show my program and uh, I'm feeling in it. Uh, I like music. I always work with choreography by myself. Uh, and uh, yeah. yes. Oh, you always did your own choreography? Yes. And Elizabeth uh, oh. helped me with this a little. After I, I choose music, I give it to her and uh, talk about it with her. And uh, I send some movie, movement uh, and uh, some idea because... Uh, I'm not only a figure skater, I'm a writer too, and uh, I can uh, show some story and uh, I can talk about it. And uh, so I put this story in my program and then uh, we are starting work. Just it. And uh, uh, I like programs, I like uh, exhibitions, and uh, uh, for me, just hard to be, uh, uh, to know that I can be success in, uh, on the competition. And I think uh, this is pricing uh, from Russian system, from Russian skating yeah. system, because uh, if you aren't uh, on the first place, if you can't, you are nothing. It's, in Russia, it's like yeah. this. And I think it should be uh, very hard work with psychologists for athletes uh, who think uh, that if uh, they aren't on the first place, uh, they aren't people. It's, uh, yeah. it's terrible. And uh, I think uh, it's, uh, it's with you all your next life. Uh, and you should work a lot uh, to, to leave these feelings. Yeah, it's hard because if you are if you are a very competitive person, then maybe that is going to make you uh, work even harder and then you will realize your dream and become first. And if you are not so competitive and you're kind of more relaxed, then maybe you never become first because you didn't have maybe, the drive inside. Maybe, but in Russia we have, we uh, can say gold, the gold medal. Uh, when uh, one thing... Uh, meet another thing, and they are working together. I think competitive people must understand that if they aren't first, the uh, world uh, uh, will be okay. They doesn't disappear and uh, they will live and uh, they must uh, keep going. Uh, not uh, fix on that, not... Uh, fix their mind on these mistakes. Uh, we must uh, uh, analyze them, uh, we must uh, learn, and then go, uh, go forward. Uh, just leave it uh, in the past. Uh, don't move it uh, to you uh, in the future. And uh, this is a very hard thing for athletes, and especially for Russian athletes, I know. Because yeah. I can see I'm uh, I work with uh, small athletes on ice, and uh, you know, in the provi uh, provincial town, in the small town, uh, Tver district, Kanakova, who knows about this place? And uh, they are think if they uh, will not uh, first uh, in their village, uh, they are nothing. And it's not normal because they have another life. They aren't yeah. uh, to bury the girls, they just uh, uh, girls. <laughs> on skates and it's normal it's uh, 
it shouldn't be uh, all their lives, I think. Yeah, Just some, sometimes you can, without your, like for me personally, because in what I did, the acrobatic pair skating, I was one of the best in the world doing this. And at some points, if I didn't, couldn't train, I'm like, I don't even feel like I exist as a person because I tie who I am and my ego and everything to this. So if I don't have this, like when I was injured and I couldn't do this, I felt like I was nothing. Yes. You know, yes. And I, and I, this is the same thing. Yes, I think this is the same thing. And uh, after all these feelings, uh, you, uh, you have pressing from your coach in Russia. It's like this. Uh, you know, uh, I... Uh, I very thankful to my Russian coach. Uh, she's amazing specialist, but uh, uh, she just in the system. She can't do anything another because uh, she maybe she doesn't want. I don't know, but um, she's working like uh, like typical Russian coach. Uh, she yeah. she she talks with me, but not really. Uh, she tried to understand me, but she can't, and uh, it was a problem. And uh, with Elizabeth, uh, we are talking a, li a lot. We was friends, and she was mentor for me, not dictator. It's another um, another thing. And on the but uh, I want to tell one thing. When uh, it was first competition uh, with Elizabeth. And uh, she uh, take my arms and uh, started uh, talk with me uh, eyes by eyes, face to face. And I was so yeah. afraid because it wasn't comfortable to me. It uh, wasn't things that I need because in Russia, uh, coach put you on the back and uh, told something like, uh, go, just go. And it's uh, amazing energy. And for me, uh, this uh, thing that Elizabeth, uh, for her, it was absolutely normal to take athletes on the arms and uh, talk with him a little before, before exhibition, yeah. before program. But for me, it yeah, wasn't. Have some compassion it, for them. It was different world, and uh, I think it was the um, it was the gold medal. It 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 it, yeah, uh, it yeah, needs yeah. the gold medal, and I say to Elizabeth, okay, Elizabeth, we can talk. In it's it's uh, amazing that we can talk, and uh, I can tell you all uh, what I have in my life, and uh, your friend for me is great. But please don't take me, uh, don't take my arms before <laughs> before competition because I can't. Uh, for me, it's. Yeah. Uh, moment uh, when i'm alone in myself and yeah, uh, yeah. it's distracting yes yes yeah. so this is uh, the yeah. difference <laughs> yeah but it is it, i mean i think this is something we all should strive for in life to find the the the, mi the middle you know not be like okay i want to lose weight so i'd stop eating you know and yes, it's, or yes, I want yes, to yes. get bigger i go to the gym every day yes, five hours yes. or, we need to find the balance of a coach to be to be tough, you know, but then also to be a human being as well, not just like do this, do this, do this. You did it wrong. You did it wrong. You're the worst. You know, you need a little bit of, you, you know. You know, uh, about white, it's big problem in Russia because sometimes coaches can't understand the, what they're talking. Because uh, in Russia, coach uh, can tell that, uh, okay, girl, uh, you are very fat. And sometimes it's not like this. It's very terrible words. And uh, yeah. uh, then girl uh, stopped it. And uh, uh, like a result, we have anorexia or bulimia or something like this. But I want uh, to uh, tell that we have uh, bad coaches and good coaches too. We have them. Yeah. And we have coaches uh, that try to work on another system. They are trying, it's, sometimes it's young, it's young coaches, uh, sometimes it's uh, old coaches uh, too, but uh, they are trying to change the system. They are trying to find this middle. And it's great 
for Russian uh, athletes, for Russian sport, because they have all to do it, I think. And uh, in competition yeah. time, I think, uh, um, I, I think uh, really we need uh, specialists in psychology, because uh, in, oh, Russian, in Russian national team, uh, uh, they have, I think, uh, they have. Uh, yeah. Specialists, but oh, no. in uh, in other teams uh, they aren't. Yeah, oh, definitely, As, especially in the past months or year or so, when uh, mental health is really, really coming to the forefront of everyone's mind. Because we all going through, we all go through so many things where we don't think we're good enough or we hold things inside and we don't share our feelings, especially as men because we have to be strong, we have to be tough, we have no emotions, we, yes. but inside, you, inside many men are broken because they can't express their feelings and people around them like talk, the worst thing you can do to someone is to tell them that they're not good enough and they'll never be anything. You need to build people up, tell them that they can do it and they will do it and give them some steps and some good advice to do things. You know, it's, I see the old way of doing things. I see it in, family my fam other people's family i look back you know because i now as my life i've changed so much over the years and now at 40 i look back at my 15 year old me 20 25 30 and what i thought and how i acted and i'm a little bit embarrassed of some of the ways i've acted when i was younger but now i've learned from this and i hope that i can use my mistakes other people's mistakes to be a better coach and a better person because as a coach it's not just skating we're teaching them to be people as well. You know, we're guiding them, you know, how to be around people better. Yes, no? yes. And this will be a mentor, a tutor, but not uh, some kinds of dictators, I think. No, 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 no dictators. Yes. That's, why, that's why we go to roller skating in a week. We have some disco lights. We have some fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's... It's so, it's so true, like uh, MT Black was just mentioning before, the, he went through the same thing, where he stopped playing volleyball and he felt like nothing. And I can only talk on myself. So the, in the past few months, it's been a huge, a huge shift for me to go from, okay, I want to do America's Got Talent and Romania's Got Talent and this talent and this show and Cirque du Soleil. I want to go to Vegas and I want to do this and do this and do this to realize like, Actually, I don't even want that. I think I wanted that so I can, so everybody else can see that I have this and I think I'm really cool. But actually, it's not fulfilling. Fulfilling is actually this last two months or three months since I have this new Instagram, and I just share some little little tips and ideas that I've learned from inline figure skating that can help people. And people, they so happy and met people message me and like, oh my god, this little tip. You gave me and another person messages oh i just start to do inline figure skating because i saw your page like so many girls from iran girls in iran message me and they doing inline figure skating there and so i this gives me more joy and happiness than doing a really cool trick in vegas or in a show somewhere because yeah that was cool but it's only cool for me really people see it it's, oh that's cool yeah next next <laughs> next you know on instagram you know so it's I think giving back to people and serving is actually one of the best things you can do. And I'm 40 now doing it. I wish I maybe I started a bit earlier, but, you know, how do you find to coaching? Do you, you, you like coaching? Do you enjoy coaching? Yes, I enjoy, I enjoy it, uh, but um, uh, it's a question about people who came to you because coaching, it's always work with people. And uh, if I see that uh, this child, uh, maybe he doesn't want to skate, I will tell it to his parents because uh, it's not enjoying. It's just uh, yeah. routine uh, for what? What, uh, yeah. oh, I mean... what do they want? <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah. I think uh, this is a good thing. And... Uh, only like this, and uh, I I like coaching. I like um, see that uh, people need it, like you. 
I think uh, yeah. uh, it's great and uh, I like um, do some projects uh, shows uh, something like this because people can uh, come and enjoy just enjoy your work and it's great I think it's great to give them some smile some to do to do them happy for one moment maybe and it's great when uh, your athlete came to the podium and uh, he's happy at this moment i think and uh, it's a very big mission to be a tutor for children uh, because you should uh, teach them uh, you should give them uh, some methods for life for uh, for not, not only skating for life you should teach them yeah. uh, how they should live how they can be can be happy and if you are an happy person you can do it just, it's just no, about it it's, it's i mean it's, yeah, it's it's not just about skating as you say like if you see, like people that are on my page they will notice i'm not it's it's very it's a, it's a very hard juggling act right because i'm also like a personal trainer I also have a lot of mistakes in my life that I learn about. So I try to give people information and ideas and some positivity with some like some uh, little little sayings that people help. But I try to not do too much. And like, I don't know, I just try to be myself. Yes. And I think when you when you when you when you just let yourself be yourself, it's so easy. You know, it's like uh If you, when I was, this is, I'll, I'll tell a really funny story now. So, uh, for me, I was always really scared of public speaking. Like the worst thing I could ever think about would be to do this, you know, to like talk live and people are hearing me. What if I make a mistake? So when I was 22 years old, so 18 years ago, anyone that's young, that's a long time. I'm really old. So I was working for Disney on Ice, and. Uh, I had a publicity so where I would go and I would have to stand in front of maybe 100 kids and I would have to tell them talk about myself and my skating. Now you could imagine I could do that quite easy now, right? I w I pretended I was sick and I didn't go to work that day so I didn't have to do it. <laughs> and I was like I was so scared. You know, even uh I did dancing on ice a few years ago in England. I was a uh, like a, an extra. I wasn't on the show. If somebody got injured, I would get on the show. But I was so happy I didn't get on the show. I still earned some money, which was good. Because I'm like, what if I have to give an interview? I was, what if I say the wrong thing? I was so nervous. So I was happy to not go on the show. Now I'm like, God, I wish I went on the show, you know. But then when you, what I'm trying to say is when you, when you know what you're talking about, when you don't have to think about it, it just comes naturally. Like we talk now, we just have a conversation about skating because we understand this. If we start talking about engineering, yes. I will have to get my notes. <laughs> I will have to look. You know, it's when you see people, they're talking and they have a notes. And like, you shouldn't need the notes if you know what you're talking about, you know? But anyway, I don't know where, what, the, what, it, what the question was or what we were talking about. This is what I do. I just talk. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, do you have any questions for me? Oh, okay. Uh, the question, I think, uh, um, uh, do you have another hobbies? Uh, not uh, figure skating, maybe something. Uh, it's not. Uh... Oh, do I have another hobby? Yes. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually. I will. Oh, I will. I will show you. Okay. If I, can... yeah. I actually have these things. Uh, they're called poi. and they actually. Whoa! <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, it's... Yeah. So you, you, you're using these, and they're making like names and like different things. Yeah. So you, yeah. So you, you're using them like this. So yeah, I I oh, I bought these a few years ago, and Natalia and I we wanted to do an act, and I bought them, and then we didn't do the act, and I have this very 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 expensive toy, and I'm like I will keep them because one day I will I will do a show and I'll earn the same money that these cost. So I still keep them, but I still didn't do this show. <laughs> so it's just very expensive toy. Uh, I used to really, really love to go to the gym. As I said, I'm a personal trainer. I got uh, this was something else I could do, but now I seem to go less time to the gym. I just kind of spend because I'm like, okay, if I go to the gym, it's an hour, and then get there and come back. I could be reading or learning something to do with what I'm doing now. My yes, coaching I can and stuff. understand. So, 
I go, I go less. But if it was closer, I would go more because I like to go to the gym. It feels good. I think everybody should do some sort of strength training. I think this will help you, as you, especially when you get to 60, 70 and you're walking and you trip over and you, you put your, your foot down and it's strong because you're doing squats or you're doing something because we get old because we stop moving. You sit down more. You yes. know? This is something I've seen with, uh, with my family. You know, one of my, my grandmas, she sat down for years not doing anything and she tripped and she fell and she broke her hip. And if you, I think if, if you keep moving all the time and you keep, keep training, then, I mean, if you, if you kept every day, did your double axe or your triple south, but every day, you just did it every day, then you would be able to do it until, I don't know what age, but would you want to do it every day? Probably not. You know? To be honest, so. uh, I can tell that now I'm not practice. I think, because uh, for me, it, um, I enjoy it when I was figure skater. Now, when I came to the gym, I can't enjoy it. I, I, I don't know why. And uh, it's very hard thing for me because uh, I was always in sport and now I have more time to, to learn something, uh, to learn in coaching, maybe in another thing in my life. And uh, it's hard uh, to, to have a balance. Uh, and uh, I know I have not balance now because uh, I'm not practicing <laughs> and it's all. Yeah, it's hard because I've always, I always, this is what I always think for anything in life. Here is your goal and you do your training to reach your goal. So if you want to be really strong, then you go to the gym and you do strength training. If you want to do really good jumps, then you work on your off skates or off ice and you work on your drills and you work on everything to this goal. But now if your goal is not to do triples and not to be strong, then you kind of like, okay, I don't have to go to the gym. I'm going to yes. chill. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a glass of wine. I'm going to have that food that I, I couldn't eat because I wanted to be thin or I wanted to be topless. Now I will have a Coke. And then you, you kind of get comfortable in that way, even though you're working really, really hard here, but you're not working hard here because you don't need to. I think this yes. happens to almost all athletes, the top of their sport, they train seven days, six days a week, so many hours, and then they, they don't have to do it anymore. And for some, they just stop. Stop, full stop, get fat, have kids, relax. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yes. Yeah, so uh, MT Black 07, do you know you know where Roller World is in Colchester? It's about one hour outside London. I'll be there uh, coaching from April 12th. I'll be doing private lessons and also uh, groups up to 15, I think, for children. And I will come and come, come down to London and have a skate outside and do some fun stuff. Uh, I know I'm look, it will be interesting to find some other skaters there. Oh yes, you told me. So we oh, were you asking uh, Anastasia to come to London, not me? He, do, he doesn't care about me. That's what he was asking you. Were you asking Anna to come to London? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Oh, the, the train is too expensive. Uh, how much is the train? Uh, mm -hmm. How much is the train, MT Black? How much is that train? Um, please repeat. Okay. I. <laughs> Oh uh, no! I'm talking. I'm talking to one guy here. Oh. You say the train is is too expensive. Okay, so maybe you can walk. Is that fresh free, right? You can skate. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> you can skate. Uh, and uh, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, that twenty pound. Yeah, I'll oh, Matthew. So oh, that makes sense. Matt Black. Matt Black. Well, maybe I will come to. Uh, maybe I'll come to visit you guys sometime in London. When it's really nice weather, I'll come there, I'll bring one of my friends uh, who can come and film some really cool stuff. That would be fun. So what else What else did we not talk about? What do you, What else do we want to talk about? I, uh, I don't know, you can ask a question if you want, because... Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm just trying to think, because I think we kind of covered everything. We covered all about frames, wheels and toe stops and Oh, boots. What what, boot, what what boots do you like to use? What are your uh, favorite boots? Ide. Ide skate. You like? Did you always skate in Ide? Yes, all my life, I think. Uh, at start, okay. I skated. It was a funny story about my first skates because when I removed to Moscow from uh, Saratov, when I was born, 
uh, became to the Moscow coach and my first Moscow coach, uh, not uh, the same uh, what I, uh, not, not the same like my usually coach. <laughs> Uh, and yeah. um, she was very angry on us because I had uh, skates from USSR. It, uh, they was made in USSR and uh, they were so old. It uh, uh, came to me uh, from my aunt. And uh, yeah. you can imagine uh, how it was. And uh, she's, I... screaming, she's screaming a lot, but we haven't money to buy you. Yeah. And uh, next, my um, uh, skates was Vifa. Uh, and oh, yeah, after yeah. it, I, at, I think when I was seven years old, yeah. I changed it to a day skates, uh, a day turns. And uh, then to a day I fly. And now on my roller skates, I have a day just. Yeah. See, they, they look so hard. Like, they don't change. They just stay hard. No? You're just bending through the, through the tongue. Uh, no, I, I... They look... They, they, they're so stiff. Yes, no? really, yes, really, really yes. Strong. But uh, uh, to be honest, I think it isn't enough for me. It wasn't enough for me last year. Yes. Because yeah. I can feel it on triple size toe, for example. Maybe on uh, triple triple flip on roller skates. Yeah. For roller skates, uh, we should uh, uh, choose uh, really hard boots because... Uh, Interesting. Uh, when I got the, uh, the, the roll line linear, I got the, I think it's the fly, uh, the, the roller boots, but it was only 55 hardness. And I just, I was like, this is, I couldn't use it. I should have got the, piano, the, the hard, the strongest boot. Uh, but I didn't know. I got them free. I won a competition in America, Skates US, and they, I got I got free boots on frame. But the boot is I don't think it's strong enough for me. Like fifty five, it's not very strong. But oh well. <laughs> uh, so I think I think I think that's it. I think we covered pretty much everything. Like uh, I feel like I learned a lot from you, and uh, it was really interesting to have a, a conversation with you. I feel like I learned quite a lot about Russian system. So now I'm going to steal all the secrets. Yeah. You'll see in England. You'll see in England in a thousand years when we work out still how to do it. Okay, <laughs> we'll see. No. no, but we will keep in touch because I think this has been uh, really interesting. As I progress more in England, we can talk about maybe some more, maybe another conversation, okay. more, more, maybe a collaboration. I just can I invite can you to Russia. It's all what I can do <laughs> because. Uh, uh... See, you know. You know, i never been to Russia. Uh, I always, when I was younger, I had a dream. I want to go to Russia and I want to do safari. I still didn't do either of these. Safari in Africa, I still didn't do them. Been to a few places, luckily, but not yet. Maybe one day for a competition would be really, really cool. So uh, thank you so much for, for, jo for joining me for a conversation. And uh, we, will, we will speak soon. Thank you. Okay. See you soon. And thank you so much for everyone joining in live and everyone that is watching this later on. Then thank you for watching this podcast. They're uh, almost one and a half hours, which is pretty good. And we will, I will see you soon. And do my, do my challenge. And also, okay. Anna, do you know, do you know that I am, uh, I have a really, really big competition coming up soon. Do you know this? Uh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, you do? Okay, so... I will try, I, I, because I, I, now I haven't place, really a good place to skate. <laughs> uh, yes. Because I, I just change... So I'm, I'm updating at the moment because I'm, I'm looking for more sponsors at the moment. I have seven pairs of boots and frames for winners from, uh, from Jackson and Golden Horse. They are my main sponsors. So it's pretty cool. But I just made a new category today, uh, an Elite Seniors. So this will be seniors uh, with double axle and above. So then there's a category for the for really everyone else. It's like the lower it's up to single lots and below it, single axle and above. But for seniors, we have one really high category. So uh, maybe you want to compete. Maybe uh, it will be more for it will be more for fun. 
But uh, I will send you personally now all the details and everyone else can just get excited for April the 15th when the competition is going to be announced. But it's going to be mega. I'm still looking for more sponsors to get more prizes. And also, I will be debuting my clothing brand, which is called IFS. You will see me wearing the clothing soon because it's being shipped. So that's exciting too. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. I, I don't know who's on next week. I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't have someone. I'm talking to a couple of people, but nothing is ironed out. So we will see if you have anyone you think I should bring on the podcast. If you th know anyone, if anyone knows anyone, then message me. And okay. thank you so much, Anna. Thank you. Baka baka. Bye. Oh. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>